everyone, let's take a look at uh, number three off of our sample exam. And here we're gonna take the absolute value function and we're gonna move it around, right? We're gonna transform it. Uh, and keep in mind your original absolute value function it looks like a V. Actually, I'll use a different color just so you can see it. Let's use this one, so it was pretty. It looks like a V, like this, right? And I, its vertex is always at zero, zero. All right, but we're gonna move it. So let, let's see how, how we moved it in this particular problem. So there's a bunch of things that happen. So this this three that's connected to the x, the x um, I can use more, it's the x variable. It's inside our grouping symbol. So this is gonna move us either left or right. And because you have this, it's always counterintuitive. So because it says minus three, you might think, oh, that's gonna move you to the left, but it's actually gonna move you right three units. Oops, I don't know what I hit there. Let me go back to this. Units, there we go. And this one here, let me change my color coding. This, since it's outside your grouping symbols, that's gonna affect your Y values and that's gonna shift you down one unit. So when it's outside the grouping symbols, right, it does what you think, right? The minus moves you down. But when it's inside the grouping symbols, and the grouping symbols we're using this time are the absolute values, it, it's counterintuitive. It actually is gonna move you right rather than left. All right, and then the other thing that we wanna take a look at, and I'll, I'll use a different color again, is this one half on the outside. So what that's gonna do, again, it's on the outside of the grouping symbols, so it's gonna affect your Y values, but this is going to compress your, your function. So what that means is if you previously had a Y value of two, or let's do, like if you previously had a Y value of eight, it will now be four because it's gonna be half as large. So it's cutting your Y values in half. So this is gonna compress your function and it's gonna compress it vertically because Y values are vertical. Okay, so let's start to take a look at what happens here. Now, on this first graph, I don't even see an absolute value, right? I need at least a V, so that's not there. I mean, it, theoretically, they might have given us part of the graph, but that's gonna be pretty suspect for me. Now, when I look at these next two graphs, I do see a vertex here, and I see a vertex here. But if I see a vertex on this one, this one looks like it's zero, negative four, which is not actually the vertex I would have thought, right? Imagine you, you had your initial vertex of zero, zero, and you moved it three units right and one unit down. So you can imagine, and let me again use a different color here. If I want three units right and one unit down, it should be at three negative one, right? So my transformed vertex, I'll put here new vertex, should be at three negative one, and that's not what I'm seeing here. And let's count, if I go on this one, one, two, three, negative one, it sure enough, there it is, over at three negative one, I see the V, so that's gonna be my answer. And again, let me just stay consistent with the colors I'm using. So there is my answer. And then at this point for part B, let's just label in all of our, our transformations. So what I did here, I would circle that I, I shifted right. Whoops, I went back to my ratio. I shifted right, three units right, I went one unit down, and then I was vertically compressed. I didn't reflect across either axis. The most, um, when you reflect, you might have a negative out here if you're reflecting across the x-axis. And if you had a negative inside the grouping symbols, you would be reflecting over the um, y-axis. But we don't have that in this particular problem. So I'm, I'm going to leave those uncircled. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Take care. Bye.